So in this video we're going to see how to respawn statically in Nginx level without any upstream servers or any static files just in the Nginx configurations itself. So if you want to learn more, do stick with me. Hello what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in the Nginx video series. So right before I start this video, just don't forget to give a visit to other videos in this video series where you can find all the cool features that Nginx provides in its open source version. So you can learn about the IP restrictions, rate limiting, load balancing and stuff like that. I'll put the link down below so you'll access it easily. So in this video we're going to see how to respond statically without any upstream servers or any static files in Nginx level only with the Nginx configuration files. So we'll see how to respond in JSON format, HTML format and also in simple text format. So without any delay let's get down to work. So as you can see over here, I've got an nginx.com file and a docker compose file in the static response directory in nginx directory in my github repository where you can find all the files and configurations and everything that I use and create in my videos. I'll also put the repository link in the description section down below. So moving to the docker compose file, over here you can see that there is only one service in this which is nginx that is using the nginx 1.21-alpine official image and over here I've got only one volume that is mounted inside the container which is the dot slash nginx.com file to slash etc nginx nginx.com file inside the container so basically this will be the file that will hold all my configurations which is mapped to the exact file inside the container that nginx will try to load the configurations by default and over here on the port section I've got only one port which is the port that I'll configure in the configuration file for nginx to start listening on. So next over here I've got the nginx.com file which has an HTTP block and a server block inside it which is listening on port 9999 that will match exactly the port that will be exposed out of the container in the docker compose file. Next I've got the client max body size which is set to 64 megabytes which is the maximum size of the requests body which will be received by nginx. So over here I've got a location block to the slash text and by using the return directive I'll set the stats code to 200 and over here I've got a simple text that will be sent back as the response body. So in order to start testing this, I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit ls, I'll cd into static response directory, hit ls again, and all I need is say docker compose op-d to run in daemon mode. And as a result, you can see that it creates a docker network and also the container attaching to that created network. So by saying docker compose ps, I'll be able to see the containers that have been created by this docker compose file that exists in the exact same directory that I am in right now. So you can see that nginx container is up and the exact same port is mapped to inside the container. Also by saying docker compose logs-f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines of the logs. So as we can see nginx service is up and running and it is now ready to receive connections. So if I go to chrome and hit localhost port 9999 on the slash text path you can see that I get the hello world as a simple text as the result of my request. So next we're going to see how to return static html as the response. So again moving back to the configuration file. I'll just copy paste the exact configuration that will actually return HTML as the response. So over here on the location slash HTML by using the add header directive and setting the content type to text slash HTML we define that the response that we're sending is in HTML content type. 
again by using the return directive setting the stats code of the response to 200 and in between of single quotes we can define our response in HTML format so as you can see this is a very basic HTML that has a title and some HTML tags over here so if I save this move to the terminal hit ctrl c to exit the logs and by saying nginx s reload i'll be able to tell nginx that is running as a container to reload its configuration files by sending the reload signal over here so i'll hit enter it says no such container and i must have a typo in my container name over here so if I hit enter again, you can see that the Nginx received the reload signal and reloads its configurations. So if I go back to the Chrome, instead of text, I'll say HTML. And as you can see, the title for my page has been changed. Also the content of the HTML that I set in the slash HTML location block is successfully received by the client. So lastly, we're going to see how to return the response in JSON format so going back to the configurations over here again I'll try to paste the relevant configurations that will be responsible to the slash JSON location and as you can see again by using the add header the content type I'm going to set the content type to application slash JSON so that the client that is making the request will ensure that the response received is in JSON format. And again, by using the return directive, setting the stats code to 200 again, which you can set to the any stats code for your use case. And again, by using the single quotes, we're going to send back a static JSON format, which holds the key message and the value hello world. So I'll hit save, go back to the terminal, hit nginx-s reload again and if I go to the chrome hit json this time you can see that I get the relevant json that I set in the configuration files as my response so if I hit f12 and if I inspect this request you can see that it is a valid json and the content type is set to application json over here so that's all for this video I hope you'll learn something new in this one and actually you can use the return directive for many use cases like for example mocking APIs which will send static JSONs as the response to the requests. Or for example you want to return a simple HTML for a defined path again without creating the relevant HTML files and things like that you can define your location blocks and return the relevant HTML in each location block. So if you have a question or any recommendations, just go ahead and ask me in the comments section down below. And lastly, don't forget to watch other videos on my channel where you can find videos about other cool technologies. And if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.